Hi everyone, I hope you all are doing good. So in my today's session, I'm going to explain about how to secure or protect your web APIs from client application by making use of Microsoft Entra ID app registration based scopes. Okay, so let's start with it. In my previous session, I explained how to protect a web API and now I'm going to explain the next step which is protecting a web API using the Microsoft Azure provided scopes basically okay so let's start with it so let's quickly go to Microsoft Entra ID which was earlier called as Microsoft Azure AD Active Directory basically <clears throat> so here I will go to app registrations okay so just for information an app registration basically represents your app on Microsoft Azure cloud as I have already explained in previous video click on new registration so for a backend service a micro service rest service whatever so I click it on uh, create new application then I click it on register uh, in the register and application wizard I have given a name and supported account types I have uh, selected accounts in this organizational directory only single tenant and I will click on register okay guys so my server side API app registration is successfully completed the most important information being yep this one the app ID and then my tenant ID so let me expose the API now. Okay. Any kind of web API microservice it needs to be exposed. So let's add an application URI. Okay. So I would like to go with the default one, whatever generated with this format. Save. Okay. Now I will add a scope. So I will add say weather real. Okay. Who can consent? I want both admins and users can consent okay for this particular api when a user or application tries to access it okay so this description enable add scope okay so whether dot read is created i will create one more that is with a top right because I'm going to demonstrate how you can provide specific scope to an client application, how you can uh, grant a specific delegated permission to a client and verify how it can access only that part of your API application. Okay, so that's why one more scope. Scope right, store share, store share, Apple, app scope. So we have added this so let's go to the authentication side okay so all set up properly and then i will check then i will go to the manifest of this app registration here one change we need to do guys because this access token accepted version if it is null then the tokens generated will be adhering to the standard of version one uh, endpoints basically the v1 uh, version one uh, endpoints with the login.microsoftonline.com okay so in order to use the version two endpoints just specify two over here okay so that the created tokens will adhere to the format of version two authentication apis provided by microsoft okay so this is one change i will make over here save the manifest so that's what from the server side api app registration side let's move on to the app registrations which is a new app registration for the client application so when registering a client application uh, yeah one point which is worthwhile mentioning so what i'm going to do is i'm registering a client application which will access my server side api so what i have done i have made my postman itself as a client application basically okay my postman itself represents a kind of client application if I wanted, I would have created a React application, which I have shown already in one of my previous videos. Okay, so it can be anything. Okay, so my Postman is the client application. So what I'm going to do is basically the redirect URI. I'm going to use this one. I'm using authorized using browser. So whenever I make a request from here, okay, the authorization and authentication takes place from this uh, browser URL. So I will make use of this callback URL. Okay, which is provided by Postman. In order to extract the token uh, 
uh, once the successful authentication and authorization takes place okay guys so let's come over here platform i would say web and let's find that redirect URI over here and then I will register the app. This is my client application. Again, uh, important piece of settings being the app ID, okay, and then the tenant ID over here. And apart from that, I need to do some configurations over here, okay. So let me go to the authentication blade. So under authentication blade, as we have already added a redirect URI, okay, as we are making use of uh, postman uh, for this uh, authentication authorization flow that's why what i need to do is for implicit, implicit grant and hybrid flows i need to select both of these tokens so i want in order to access my web api or microservice i need an access token in order to authenticate and authorize myself i have to make use of id token so i will select both of these uh, token types okay so this is one change i have to do i will save it okay next time uh, the next step will be generating a secret but i will do it when i'm uh, demonstrating it using the postman and apart from this the most important thing is api permissions okay now for this client application whether it's a react application angular desktop wpf postman whatever okay now i have to give a api permission because my client application is going to access a server side api just now we created okay it's app registration so what i'm going to do is simply come over here under add api permissions click on add permission okay go to apis my organization uses over here i should locate my previously created server api app registration which is over here okay select this okay now can you see this is a delegated permissions okay your application needs to access the api as a signed in user okay as i have already explained there are two types of permissions delegated permissions and app permissions delegated permissions we use when a user logs in into your application these are basically a front end basing applications mobile application desktop whatever which faces user where user logs in okay and the application will basically uh, makes api calls or access the apis on behalf of the signed in user that's why only this tab is enabled and if you see over here the application permissions is completely disabled why because i'm not making use of any app rules okay in my server side api which i'm trying to this one the server side app registration okay which i created in the first step i have not specified any app rules or application permissions so this demonstration is related to delegated permissions which are nothing but scopes okay so that's why you would see only delegated permissions so for this particular app mbs client app dev i want to give okay a scope level permission or delegated permission of weather dot read okay so the application the client application then tries to access the apis provided by this particular mbs server api dev okay only the endpoints which are annotated or decorated with weather.read scope, only those endpoints will be accessed by this application. Okay. If you try to access any endpoints which are annotated or decorated with weather.write, no, you will be represented or given with 403 forbidden error. Okay, quickly I'm going to show that. So for demonstration purpose, for the first client app, I'm giving only weather.read at permission. Okay. As you can see permission has been added there was a default permission uh, when i created an app registration it was given to me that is for the microsoft graph api which was provided by microsoft and i had a permission or a scope basically uh, that is user dot read so now for my api which i am going to develop soon for which i created app registration for that also what i have done this is my api name and i have given only weather dot permission delegated type is delegated not application okay so once this is done whenever a client application tries to access this particular api okay and the endpoint requiring a scope of weather dot read or delegated permission the user has to provide a consent that's why admin consent required it is no okay because both the users and admin can provide the consent okay 
once the user or admin provide the consent when they try to access this okay you will get a status of green mark here okay so that's all about it so this is done so let's move on to the code side now guys okay again for the safer side i will go to the manifest and here also the access token accepted version i will make it true in order to access the latest version which is called version 2 of microsoft uh, authentication endpoint urls okay so i would like to make use of them that's why the format in which the token will be generated should adhere to that format and the new uh, version 2 apis provided by microsoft so save it <coughs> done First of all, open Visual Studio Code now. Well, I'm in Visual Studio Code. Uh, you would have remember, first we created an app registration uh, for a server-side API. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a web API project, which basically allows me to create a web API, okay, which will be running on the server. So use this command .NET new web API hyphen n. Uh, meaningful name and then the most important uh, switch being hyphen hyphen auth single org with this particular command you are not required to uh, manually install the microsoft.identity.web libraries if you uh, create a project with this particular switch i think this template itself will automatically add all the required dependencies okay so no need to configure anything manually Okay. It will add the settings into the uh, auth uh, app settings.json file. Also, it will add the required libraries also. Okay. So let me do that quickly. So I hit enter and that particular command created this project over here. And if you see, Microsoft Identity Web has been automatically installed. And if you go to uh, yeah, the app settings.json, you will find uh, the settings automatically inserted into the settings file. So this is the setting Azure AD, uh, in which the template automatically inserted and I have just now added this instance, which is most of the time this one, HTTPS com slash slash login dot Microsoft online dot com. Okay, this is the server where you will authenticate and authorize yourself and you get the tokens. Domain, that is my Azure AD domain, basically my default directory. Okay, so it contains a domain over here. Can you see? Okay. The username dot on Microsoft dot com. The same thing. My username dot on Microsoft dot com. I have put now tenant ID. I need to get it uh, from here. So I'll go to home and from there I will go to Microsoft Enterprise default directory and yeah. So I will copy this tenant ID and I'll paste it over here. Okay. And then the client ID, okay. For the API application, go to the app registrations over here, all applications, and I will need the API applications app ID, which is over here. Copy it and paste it over here. Always remember when you develop applications on any kind of cloud, okay, two steps, okay, the configuration and then code, okay. Both should link together in order to work, okay. So this is how you will do. You have to first set up your uh, application abstractions on your cloud. You have to get all these IDs. Then you do the development for your application and both should be linked. And how they will be linked? Using all these settings, okay? And then the libraries provided by Microsoft or any cloud provider to integrate them at the runtime, okay? Uh, these are the two scopes. Basically, I have added these two settings, read scope, write scope, as I had created over here. You would expose an API whether dot write whether dot read okay so same i have added here whether dot read and whether dot write basically okay so this is the required setting okay if you miss uh, any of these settings like client id tenant id okay instance scopes okay the application won't work these are the required information okay or the required piece of settings which we must supply okay in order for it to work properly so that's it i will save it and apart from that if you go to the program.cs i think the template has automatically uh, injected the code required for the authentication okay can you see build the services add authentication the jwt by default and then it has bound the configuration section okay so that's all set and let me also add a call to 
yeah this is the first step and what we need to do is after use https redirection and before use authorization i need to add a call for app dot use authentication yeah without this call the authentication won't work properly okay so this is the required step so that's the setup i need to do from the program.cs side that is also done settings have been added properly now from code side i will do a little change quickly well from the code side uh, the template has automatically added the authorized attribute okay which is coming from my top is finished code authorization okay and yes i have done a little code change over here so i have done a little code changes over here so there are two endpoints one is http get which returns me a list of uh, weather forecast and one is post which simply uh, simulation of adding some data to your database okay so here the required scope attribute can you see this is the most important piece over here which is coming from microsoft.identity.web.resource okay so you are putting a required scope attribute okay and you are mentioning what is the expected scope okay in order to access this get endpoint okay so azure ad colon read scope this is being read from your app settings file basically your configuration so if you come over here you see over here under azure ad what is the read scope the scope is weather dot read okay this is same as the one you created over here weather dot read okay so what i have done is i have specified in order to access this particular endpoint the application which is trying to access this api's endpoint must have okay must have a delegated permission called read scope which is weather dot read over here okay same ways there's one more uh, endpoint uh, which is called post so in order to access the post action method okay uh, the client application which is trying to access it okay must have a delegated permission of write scope which is weather dot write basically just for your information over here okay if the incoming token doesn't contain these scopes in its scopes collection then server will return a 403 forbidden error okay you won't be able to access these endpoints if the required scopes are not set on your token okay so that's all about it now let me open the postman and do a configuration let's check whether this works or not we are not making sure yep it's up and running uh, it's up and running which is good so let's go to the postman now important thing so well the server was up and running and when i access the https url then when i try to access the weather forecast by using get method i got 401 unauthorized error which means your server is up and running and it is working fine it is not allowing any application or user to access it as it is you have to authenticate and authorize yourself okay so this is done so go to the postman So in the postman, I have entered the get method and then my localhost URL to get the weather forecast collection. Okay, over here, go to authorization. Okay, now from available list, select OHOP 2.0, guys. Okay, uh, which I have already explained in the previous video. So give a meaningful uh, token name. Okay, select the check mark authorize using browser. So whatever URL you are getting here, the same should be there in your. Uh, yeah, the client applications callback URL, okay, which we have already done as you remember, okay, we have added this. Now, next, the auth URL, the first one is the authorized URL, basically where you perform your authorization in order to get the authorization code, okay, that uh, you can find uh, in your app registrations. You go to app registrations overview blade over here. As you can see, for the version 2 APIs provided by Microsoft for authorization endpoint, you will use this URL, okay? And for the token endpoint, you will use this URL in order to adhere with OAuth 2.0 authorization, okay? So same I have done over here, okay? The, I have copied the same value author, for authorization URL. I copied the authorization URL from there, okay? So there's a login.microsoftonline.com. Your tenant ID, this is the most important piece of setting or the information you have to include in this URL, okay? and then the rest of the part okay
Well, same for the token URL. Uh, copied from here, the token endpoint URL, and I have pasted over here. Okay. Client ID. Let me update the correct client ID. So this is my postman is basically my client application now. Okay. Treat it as some uh, single page application or a web application. Okay. Which is going to access my API. So what I'm going to do is that client ID I have to provide over here. So go to my app registration. So I will copy my application ID over here. Okay. And let me paste. Sorry, let me paste over here. Okay, this is my client ID. Okay, now I need to generate a client secret. Okay, in order to authenticate and authorize yourself, and in order to get the ID and access token, always remember. Okay, you have to you make use of your app registrations secrets. Basically, multiple secrets are available. Let me show you that quickly. Go to the certificates and secrets you can either uh, make use of certificates in order to uh, yeah in order to generate these tokens or you can make use of client secrets okay so i'm going with the approach of client secrets let me create it quickly click on app so this is the value generated copy it and go to postman so and leave okay use this client secret okay if you don't pass the client secret okay uh, for your authorization and endpoint token url you will not, you will not be able to generate any token okay now most important thing scope okay now here i need to pass the scope for which i am allowed okay now i'm going to explain how to provide that permission uh, if I go to client app, if I go to API permissions, which we have already provided, yes, uh, during the first step, okay, this client app already have permission on server API, okay, that we had added, you remember, okay, so this particular have, this particular client application have a permission, delegated permission on this API application, and what is that scope provided? What is the scope granted basically? It's a weather dot read. Okay. There were two scopes, weather dot read and weather dot write. But for this client application, we have given only weather dot read. This application can only read the weather data. It can't add anything. Okay. That is the requirement, business requirement. Okay. So as we already have the permission set over here, okay. What I need to do is I need to put the scope. So in order to get that scope URL. Go to your server application okay go to the expose and api and here get that weather dot read copy this okay this scope you have to specify when you send the request basically okay so i have added this scope yeah now all these things are done and app is up and running so let's try to generate a token now okay guys what I'm going to do is go down, clear all cookies, and get new access token. This basically opens a browser window where it asks us to authenticate using username and password. I will use my Outlook. Okay, so let me authenticate myself. On successful authentication, now Microsoft Azure is prompting for the consent. Okay, so it is saying that permissions requested one of two. Okay, MBS client app application, the client application. Okay, would like to access this weather dot read. It is basically asking your consent. Okay, this app would like to uh, requesting this weather dot read consent. Okay, you have to provide your consent, view your basic profile, and all other things. Okay. So click on next okay and then mbs server api dev this application not from microsoft this app would like to view user basic profile maintain access to data you have given it to access okay you need to provide the consent okay you can uh, consent it on behalf of your organization because i am administrator i am the administrator basically who created this uh, consent on my portal application and the ID I am basically using to log in for this application is basically an administrator account. That's why I can consent on behalf of the organization itself. But 
in real time production case scenarios this won't happen okay so here i'm going to just accept it. okay the authentication is successful can you see this site is trying to open postman and you can you see the url https colon slash slash oauth.postman.io okay whatever redirect uh, url we had provided right after successful authentication now it is going to pass the code authorization code to postman okay so click on open see okay the authentication failed let me check yeah now this time the authentication is successful i'll click on proceed okay now postman is asking me to can i go ahead and use this access token which i have successfully generated for my email id okay so i will say use token okay the token has been added to authorization if you go to the headers okay seven are hidden so if i click on this it has automatically added the authorization header of the token which i have successfully generated okay now i will send the request can you see okay if you see over here i am able to access the api okay this client application this postman is my client application which has been provided a delegated permission called which one go over here so api sorry to, yeah api and the api permissions yeah which was given a permission to mbs server api dev application okay and with the scope delegated permission of weather dot read yes i am able to access the get endpoint from my code okay this one so when the code came here it basically checked whether the incoming access token whatever we access right that particular token whether contains this read scope or not so it is containing that's why i was able to access it so if i want to check whether the token contains this scope or not we can very easily check copy this token from here so oh, let me get that token to headers copy this entire content basically oh. open a browser window and type jw3.ms this should open the utility in order to decode the jw3 tokens provided by microsoft so can you see after decoding the token this is decoded always remember tokens are in the encoded version okay you have to decode them if you want to see some information so in the decoded token if you go over here can you see the scp claim okay this is called scope and what it contains whether dot read for user manoj kumar bedre okay and for the application okay and for the application this one yeah so for my user and for the client application which is azp okay so for this particular client id or the client application which we had registered over here this one okay if you see this this has that app id 301 ending with e70 okay so for this particular application we had provided a permission of weather dot read that's why when we generated the token the token contains this important piece of information that's why the api call is successful and we are able to get the response okay now i will show you what will happen if i try to access this endpoint post okay i have not specified particular endpoint url for each and every action method i have you used the controller level url itself okay just the methods are differing but if you want you can provide your own paths for each and every endpoint okay guys so now i'm going to change the method to post for the same url and let's see if i get the data or not okay what status code basically i will get yeah, let's make it post okay you will send the request can you see http status code 403 forbidden okay the scope or scp claim does not contain scope whether dot write which is true because if you go here does it contain whether dot write somewhere no only one value right that's why you are not able to access that post method okay this is the beauty of scopes guys if you have a complete whole bunch of your uh, application functionality in terms of uh, server apis then using the concept of this scopes you can basically specify what all client applications 
applications like this what all client applications can access what part of your 100% of api functionality okay so if you divide your applications into these kind of scopes it will be very easier to manage and also it will be very easy to provide role based access control basically okay using this scopes okay at the application level so the applications can only access that particular scope of your api nothing else apart from that okay so that's the power of scopes so now i will also show you how to access that post method now okay so first thing what you need to do is go to the api permissions in your client application there are two ways to achieve this okay first thing go to your api permissions which is over here this is the first approach i had shown you by going to your client applications app registration yes you can add the permissions you can configure the permission permissions there is one more way okay which you can do is go to your api applications app registration go to expose an api and over here authorized client applications authorizing a client application indicates that this api trusts the application and users should not be asked to consent when the client calls okay no consent is required because you are trusting the client application so what i'm going to do is very simple take my client id which i had copied from Andro portal okay so come over here add a client application paste it the moment you paste over here see there are two authorization scopes okay so my client application already has a weather dot read permission okay now we are looking for the weather dot write and this weather dot write particular scope this particular scope i'm going to grant okay or i'm going to authorize it from the api side this is another approach which you can do so what i'm going to do is I'm going to select the weather dot right now because client application already has a permission to weather dot read which we configured from the client application registration now from the server application registration i'm adding this client application as a trusted application and once add and while adding this client application as a trusted application i also specifying what scopes basically this application can access from this api so in this case weather dot right i'm giving so add application done now what we will do we'll go to the postman the method is already post okay what we are going to do is under authorization we will regenerate the token clear the cookies and get new access token so authentication is complete i will use the token okay now i will send the same request let's see this time what status it will return 200 okay added a weather data to db can you see guys okay until and unless i won't give permission to my client application it won't be able to access specific api endpoints having specific requirement of scopes okay this post endpoint has a requirement of having the right scope basically okay it should have a weather dot right uh, scope or delegated permission in order to access it now if i take the token and check in the jwt dot uh, ms get that token here This time it will be able to see both the scopes coming into the token. Okay. So come over here, paste for A, V. Okay. If I go down, can you see the scope claim this time contains weather dot read separated by a space and then weather dot write. That's why this particular client application called Postman is able to access the other endpoint also, having the HTTP verb post. Okay, guys. So this is the power of scopes, uh, which basically provided by Microsoft in order to, as I already explained, divide your entire application API functionality into various scopes and provide the permissions based on the need basis, basically. Okay. If an application just want to read your API data, there's no point in giving uh, entire application access to that particular client application, right? So it's better provide only the required scope. Okay. So if application wants read scope, give it just a read scope. So it will make use of uh, read APIs, basically web APIs. Okay. And even if it tries to access other APIs, it will fail. Okay. So the care will be taken. Okay. The care will be taken by the API side itself by clicking your incoming access tokens when you authenticate and authorize yourself. Okay. So I hope you people understood now. 
uh, how you can basically make use of course how they help okay so i'm going to show the other way around now so one way the uh, sorry the one approach where i added a client application is from the api app registration basically when i exported an api okay in that wizard also i had option to authorize a client application okay so what i'm going to do is same thing now i'm going to remove this from here okay i don't want all these things just delete okay yeah now the first approach which i shown you going to the client application registration yeah so i will go to client application registration api permissions guys this is the preferred way most of the times always remember okay you can add this permissions from the api in the server side app registration also and from the client side app registration also but most of the time it is better approach to always add permissions to your apis from the client app registration okay instead of blindly trusting any client applications from your server side app registrations okay one approach i had already shown you using weather.read same i will do now weather.write so for the weather.write click on add permission apis my organization user say this one okay here we had selected last time weather.read now i will select this right also okay add permission okay this way also now the api should work if i try to access the post endpoint this one it should work okay so as you can see the the moment i added this particular api permission from the client app registration now you can clearly see see that this particular client application is asking you to provide a consent for whether dot write scope this app would like to use this whether dot write scope on this api application okay next and you say yes accept it that's it um, Open the token. Open. Yeah, proceed. Use the token and send. Yeah, added a weather data to DB and HTTP status code 200. Okay, same like the previous approach. Okay, and always remember in this scope you have to specify that weather dot write scope. Okay, don't forget to uh, mention that. Okay, so that's all about it guys same thing guys same kind of setup you if you use a react or angular based application all this information all the setup you will do in the code and you will try to place the request okay so that's why i didn't make use of any spy applications instead i use the postman okay for better demonstration so that's all about it so this is how uh, basically scopes are used in uh, microsoft edge or in order to uh, protect part of your api functionalities for your business domain okay always remember okay so let me show that okay if this is your whole api functionality of your business then always follow the approach of scopes basically okay so this is my whole application i would say okay use and name let's say um, product sales i would say you have some company uh, which you manufacture products okay so if this is your entire api functionality server side functionality then always go for this approach of creating scopes okay, like this decide it based on the consumption of this api is basically okay if there are some third party applications or some of the applications or solutions developed in, within your own organization itself if they want only some piece of information or some piece of data and functionality in such cases you create this kind of scopes okay like if it's the product sales you will be having the order apis okay you will be having inventory apis okay so for each and every kind of api you specify the scopes read level scope write level scope okay and then the, uh, other operations like just getting minimal data from your apis okay 
you it may be a user related information like user dot basic the way microsoft graph uses if you want to read only minimal piece of information then you uh, you specify user dot read scopes okay user dot full read this kind of scopes you will specify for your entire api let me draw them quickly so trivial example for order API, I, I have specified three scopes like order.read, order.write, order.completed transactions if you want to read, create a scope for that and annotate these scopes when you write your code, okay, annotate those endpoints by these particular scopes, okay, and when a particular client application or your organization own application wants to access only some piece of functionality and data, based on business requirements you decide it properly if the client only wants to read the order data then provide them the scope of just order.read to their app registration if they want to perform both read and write then provide order.write if they want only the order.completed transactions data which is very minimal in nature then you provide them this kind of scopes for their app registration this way they will be able to access only those endpoints which are annotated with this uh, scope attributes in your code the way I used over here. Okay, for example, if there is one more endpoint and it is having a read scope, then only those endpoints with this read scope will be able to be able to be accessed by those client applications. Apart from that, nothing else they can access if they don't have a required scope level permission or delegated permissions. Okay, so that's all about scopes. And when you design your applications, uh, always make use of this kind of. Uh, Scopes, which is already a fully baked solution provided by Microsoft Azure instead of creating your own custom solutions by writing your own custom filters. Okay, these are very useful, very handy, and have a lot of good documentation. Okay, and easy to implement also. Okay, guys, thank you for listening and have a nice day. In my next video, I'm going to explain about the roles. Okay, we gone through the scopes. Now the next thing is all about roles, how we can configure. How we can secure our applications using the notion of application rules or application permissions basically okay thank you for listening have a nice day